It's tabletop time. I'm, I'm Dazza. I'm Jave. Oh, I hope you'd pick up on that. It took me a while. Yeah, <laughs> we're going. We're going a little cheeky original. Something different for you. Yeah, there you Speaking go. of something different for you, this is Dave's first time using an airbrush. <laughs> well, when I say an airbrush, you have the wonderful experience of using the cheapest thing I could find. So we're mucking around today. We're comparing the cheapest of the cheap and most accessible airbrush because mm -hmm. it does up your game. An airbrush is amazing. I've been using this one. This is right in the middle. This is not an air compressor made for airbrushes. Maybe it is. It was a Copic airbrush, airbrusher, mm -hmm. but it's compatible with an airbrush. So I just plugged in an airbrush, which is a medium tier, like not super cheap, but not like the top tier airbrush. I yeah. loved it. It's really good. I did so use I, uh, this for two minutes. I used it for two minutes yeah, yeah, doing your that. enamel spray. That's my sum total of my lifetime's experience with How, an airbrush. How did you feel? It was terrifying. And I'm particularly looking forward to this side of the table. So this is, uh, look, you can get even more fancy air compressors, but this is like right up there with like really perfectly suited for mini painting because it doesn't take up a lot of space. Let me get this straight. These are very, very expensive top tier airbrushes and you're letting me touch them. Yeah. Me who's never, <laughs> never played it. Of course I am. Because we're all in this together. Da -da. This airbrush, if you want to start opening and unpacking it, that cost us $22. And it doesn't look poorly constructed. If you lift that out though, oh, that's something glass. The biggest difference I think is how it feels. Hold both of them. Oh yeah, that feels balanced. That. It's not too bad, it's but too it almost bad. feels like cheap metal. It almost feels like, oh, that's what... you know what I mean? Like it's, Feels like light and almost like a chrome. Yes, pretend. my fingers are detecting the exact alloy used in this, and I definitely think that it's a better build. All right, we're plugged in. You ready? I'm just fing around with the button. I think, well, I think this whole video is just fing around. I, think that's, is it? I don't think we could put that in the, the title, though. Fing around with the button, name of my, high, my nickname in high school. Fing around with the button, that's what they called you. Yeah. Think about it. This should be, in theory, good to go. I'm just going to press on. It sort of moves around. <laughs> I don't think, okay, I'm turning it off. I don't think it has a chamber. So I don't think it's going to stop doing that. Hold your hand out. You get an initial burst. You're going to There's want, you're going to want to aim that burst off the mini. Otherwise yeah. you have no consistency. Yeah. All right. Do you know what? I think we need to muck around with it. Okay. Let's, let's go. Do it. So before Dave dived into the depths of airbrushedness, uh, we first dabbled in how they work. What? Uh, parts make up an airbrush, how to basically wash it, swap colors, uh, how the mechanism works by pushing down and pulling back and getting the air flowing through, how to basically solve some minor problems like if it's starting to clog, sort of getting it to force through or clean through some chunks or things that might be blocking it. Uh, and that was basically my crash course. Then it was all it was all you. When I first pressed the on button and heard that meh of, so of like this side. tiny electric box, I was worried. Um, and the first airbrush was pretty bad. I'm just going to lay it out there straight up front. Not only was I trying to learn how to actually airbrush, but the level of control I had with this brush felt like it was really bad. It could have been that I was just starting to learn, but it just didn't offer me like a finer point. It didn't offer me what I wanted. Everything I tried to do was blown out and kind of didn't really work. Where were your expectations though? Way too high, I think. I think that I had this idea so that I'd come in This magical thing that could get gradients correct. and details like yeah. perfectly. And what I found the most um, with this one is that because it was so limited, I actually used the tool and really worked with my limitations. I tried to stay back from the model. I tried to give like quite broad and gentle layers of paint and build up a really natural effect, which is why I think overall there's a really cool, like deep gradient of color going on with this first bust, but mm. anywhere where detail is needed, like the eyebrows, <laughs> it just falls apart. Yeah. So, 
this is a little more serious now. Maybe I'm just hyperactive or too little slate, but I'm seeing a little canine unit from Dr. Who. It looks like a little dog with stumpy little feet, like a sausage dog. It is pretty cute. So this does Whoa. a similar thing. It it's a, it's a lower... It's now, I need to fix mine. The last time I used this, it stopped working, so I might have broken it. But I'm going to see if I can problem solve this with you now and fix it. Air is leaking out the bottom, but it's not meant to. If I turn this up, it's going to explode. Yeah, well it won't because the release valve is constantly releasing pressure. Well, I'll just hold that there, maybe. No, no. You <laughs> don't just hold your finger on the pressure valve. Did that scare you? Not even remotely. Uh, so I think what we can take from this is these are a little more fragile than higher end air compressors. Have you looked at like, have you got the manual for it? <laughs> so my review of this unit is it carried me through a year of semi-regular use. And then it's probably perfectly fine. And someone who knows how to use this would just be like, I just twist this and it'll be so fine. So my solution was to buy a more expensive air compressor. This one is going to be less prone to breaking surely. But for now, we're going to review the mid-tier airbrush with the, the top-tier compressor, which means there's going to be nothing holding back this mid-to-good-tier mid, mid to good tier airbrush from reaching its full potential. Air me. Oh, that's one consistent flow of air. Let's give this, let's take this baby for a ride. So once I jumped up to the next airbrush, I think one of the biggest things I noticed is we moved to the next compressor. This is where I started to get a little bit in over my head, I felt. So I was attempting to do things that I felt that I just lacked the knowledge to be attempting, like adjusting the pressure and yeah. trying to get different results. And it kind of shows on model. There's a lot of really bold ideas in this model where I was trying, like I tried to bring in a highlight color that just ended up looking like it gave the poor fellow jaundice. Um, but it, I was really trying to bring in some more interesting um, tones. And overall, personally, this is my least favorite outcome of the three. What about the process? Because you could redo it and get a different outcome. How did it feel to use as far as your control and uh, accuracy the, and pleasantness? The finesse and control in the level was better than the previous one, um, definitely. I could get finer points. I could control it. It wasn't... Um, I felt like the cheap airbrush, it was kind of on or off. I had more scope or breadth in... Yep technique that I could do. Once I tried to get in, I, I did kind of ruin. Uh, one of the reasons the chest is so yellowed out is because I tried to get close and it just spluttered. I got this, the spidering effect, I think yeah. you called it, all yeah. over that cut on the left side of his chest. Overall, during the airbrush experience, I found that painting over mistakes is really hard with airbrushing. Yeah. When it goes bad, it goes really bad. Like you suddenly, <laughs> <laughs> you go yeah. and there's like this thick and you can't dab it off because yeah. it leaves water lines and mark lines and my the bane of my process today was these when i would over spray and it would just jet out this thick paint and i could not bring it back And that's how the mid-tier airbrush goes. Wait, there's four airbrushes. No, there's two. Well, yeah, this is another one. Is it the same as this? No, it's an, just another fancy one. Because I wanted another. Fancy. Okay, so which one aren't we using? We use both. Okay. <gasps> oh my god! Oh, it's bling. Oh, it's fucking sexy! Oh my god, that matte red. Oh my god. And there's a dial here. I don't know what that does, but it's extra controls that I'll figure out maybe. So we're going to deconstruct our airbrushes at the same time. Okay. Which is scary. So if you grab this middle thing, if you untwist that, it's going to deconstruct the end. We'll take the end off. There are lots of little components to the airbrush. That's it. If you break that, I'll kill you. You take it apart. <laughs> if I break it, it's no big deal. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. I know, I, I, I care about things. It's certainly complex. What's it's almost this? like you need to know what you're doing to use a fancy, expensive airbrush. Let's start with this one, because that came off. So, I don't know, but it looks cool. <laughs> what do you mean and you don't know? <laughs> Why did you take it off? Why did we we'll take figure it, off? it out by the end of this video. It'll all be justified and explained. So this, so I know like 80% of this stuff because it was on the other airbrush that I got used okay. to. So you pull this off and then it loosens this up and the pin can come out. So this is an airbrush pin, but it comes with two of different sizes. This is a different oh, nozzle. 
and look at the end there. I am guessing that this is a much smaller. Oh, yep. Wait, or is it? And it's got it's a little different cap size paint cup. A little different paint cup. So I am re putting it together after never having used it before. And if it doesn't work, maybe it was the airbrush. It's all back together now. I have no idea what I achieved, but I feel more connected to the airbrush. And I think that's important. Okay, cool. Let's all right. This is where, and I, I mean, I, I fell into the trap of I'm getting the fancy airbrushes. It's going to be perfect and amazing. My expectations for simplicity and control are higher, mm. but we both found that it was much more complex to use well. The most expensive tool was the most finicky, I'd say. And Take us through your early process because it went bad pretty quickly from what, like before you, you didn't get to painting the model before you. There was of, a lot of shouting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> basically, it didn't take to anything the way the other airbrushes took to anything like the paint i wasn't sure if it was the paint we were using if it was the consistency but the thing was everything was the same as the previous two airbrushes and then when it goes in this third airbrush it was sputtering so this is where i stepped in and took both the airbrushes and deconstructed them and watched video guides and looked at whatever manuals that i had uh and tried to build a bit of that foundation. And it did take a bit of trial and error to figure out what was going on to also find exactly what it was that Dave was experiencing that was frustrating and eliminate that. In the end, it came down to a few things. And one was just making sure that the needle was not too aggressively, but fairly firmly pressed up against the end of the, the nozzle, uh, just so that the very start of where you paint, it's blocking all of the air and paint from going through. You push down, you pull back, and then it starts to let the paint through. So the other thing too, is I found the more I opened up the nozzle on my Infinity CR+, Plus, which had by default the 0.4 millimeter nozzle, the more that spattering happened. And I believe, it's because it's such a fine point it's meant to work to precision but when i was keeping it more controlled and going for detail i never had that issue i didn't have that sputtering problem unless it was just a genuine paint clog or something like that so what i decided this meant is this infinity would be the detail airbrush and that's where i would then understand the reaper airbrush and use that with its deep cup and the thicker needle that it comes with to be the base coat and the larger area and a lot of people that i see using airbrushes in their content often have a few that they swap between because then you don't have to change needles you can hot swap between the different types of airbrushing you're doing uh, so the reaper would be the broader brush and the infinity would be the detail brush and that was basically how we approached the more advanced model uh, and i got both to a state where i was really comfortable with how paint was flowing through but for both of those purposes and then i uh, gave him back the driver's seat to sort of go through his third model so take us through that and the reaper one was just similar to the previous one the iwata eclipse but uh it was really easy to use i didn't have any issues with it for those once i'd embraced the idea that this was for the base coating yeah it was easy then i moved on to the infinity cr for the details and it was a love hate affair with this this thing because i think a large part of it comes down to my complete lack of skill or knowledge in this experience area. and it, it's very miles. much experience and being handed the sort of precision tool that I just didn't understand how to tweak in which direction. How do I get, which way am I taking the pressure to get the effect that I want? So while we got to a point where I under, I could use it a lot better and I could combat the negative issues and not suffer from the sputtering very much, it was more of a back and forth challenge than any other airbrush I was using where yeah. I was getting better results, finer finesse and tighter outcomes that looked better but at the cost of much more time fiddling after changing paint colors, I'd have to spend way longer getting the consistency right of the paint and spraying to make sure it's not sputtering. I started to do some things where it's quite subtle, but when you look at them up close, you can see the difference in the mm. way that the red feathers out. I even got bold and did like way more accurate um, sort of reddening around the nose, the eyes, the cheeks, uh, the lips. It's just far more accurate and far better, even in the ears a little bit. And this is your first day airbrushing. Just look at that, bro. Like you got to be proud of that. I kind of And you actually like to achieve that with brushes would take I actually, so freaking long. I, I didn't think I'd have any attachment or any care about these models, but I once you I painted, like I actually really like this little man. That's so cool. I think I'm going to be saving up for an airbrush. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. One of the things I'm thinking of immediately that this kills for is gradients. Yeah. And in 40K, painting vehicles with good blends and gradients is so tedious yeah. with a brush. 
So I'm kind of thinking my Chaos Knights are going to need an airbrush to help them along in the future. Sounds good, man. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, and also, this is the next Mini Monday video that's come out since we launched the uh, Mini Club. So go check it out. It's very exciting. We've already we've done a very improvised stream, but we're going to semi-regular, like every couple of weeks, do di private Discord streams on our private Discord, which is the Mini Club, uh, which is a second Patreon. We have a Roleplay Patreon and our Minis Patreon. And if you're into mini painting, want to share this journey with us, tips and ideas and exchanges, share your process, we share ours. That's what it's all about. If and you haven't seen the video explaining the Patreon, check it go out. Go check it out. Thank you so much for watching, guys. This was fun. Thank you did you. great. Thank you very much. Well hey, done. and thanks for taking me on the journey. Well, tabletop time's up. Thanks for watching, and we've already signed off. So we're signing off again because I said because tabletop time's up. But yeah, no, we did that, and they're scrolling on the screen. But mate, we haven't set that one up yet. We'll do, we're doing that soon. Yes. Bear with it's us. It's a good idea. Space bear with us.